Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Discovering Pathways series. So all these episodes are brought to you by Annie, which is the Amplify Nevada Native Youth. And for those who don't know, Amplify Nevada Native Youth is a project that we designed with the Nevada Department of Education. And basically, we wanted to get more outreach and college outreach, career outreach to Native youth across the state of Nevada. And also, we wanted to make this broad to all Native students who are interested in different colleges and different career opportunities. And so in our past episodes, we featured various professionals, Native professionals from Illuminatives, um, Center for Native American Youth. And we've also featured the University of Nevada, Reno, and also the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And today we are proud to feature the Haskell Indian Nations University, our first TCU, and I'm very excited. Haskell is an extremely beautiful university. But before we get into everything, I'd like to introduce today's host. And first, I would like to introduce myself, Avery Wyatt, and I'm a student at the University of Nevada, and also Ferdina Romero. Ferdina is the Education Programs Professional for Indian Education at the Nevada Department of Education. And so a little bit of background for myself. So I joined along with Annie and we actually built this program at the end of July. And so we're still in the beginning stages, but we've had really good success with the program. And so for me too, also, I am Washington Paiute and I grew up on the Hungry Valley Reservation in Sparks, Nevada. And this is also part of the Reno Sparks Indian Colony. And so I'm currently a student, a senior at the University of Nevada, Reno. I'm about to graduate with degrees in both political science and public health with a minor in addiction treatment services. <clears throat> and now, Ferdina, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ferdina Jai Romero, and I am Southern Paiute from Kaibab, Arizona, and from the Mapa Band of Paiutes um, in Southern Nevada. Did I say that right? Northern Arizona, Southern Nevada. Um, I'm also a Haskell alumni, so I'm really excited that we get a feature. Uh, my alumna, or my um, alma mater tonight, and I'm excited about the guests that are going to be on and that um, we're also joined by one of our um, staff at, there at Haskell. So we're excited to invite you in and um, continue coming in and um, listening and gathering information uh, for your students um, or if you're a student to get the information you need uh, to learn about the schools and the colleges from awesome um, alumni or students who are still there. Thank you, and now back to you, Avery. Cool, thank you, Ferdina. And before we introduce tonight's guests, I would just like to say thank you to all the guests who have tuned in every single week. We've had multiple shows per week. We've had one show per week so far. And thank you to all our loyal guests, all the people asking questions. And if you have questions about the university, don't forget to save them for the end, because we will be answering everyone's questions with the students and also with another special guest we will be having. And so today to introduce our special student guest we will have, <clears throat> today we have Dania Wawasuk, and she's uh, Prairie Band Potawatomi and Pyramid Lake Paiute. And also we have Sanavi Spoonhunter, Spoon Hunter, sorry. She's, she's a descendant of the Northern Paiute, Lakota, and Northern Arapaho Nations. So Dania, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more? Yeah, hello. My name is Daniel Wasik. I'm Prairie Band Potawatomi from Mayetta, Kansas, and Pyramid Lake Paiute from Sutcliffe, Nevada. I'm 19 years old, and I have my associates in art from Western Nevada College, and I'm currently working on my bachelor's in elementary education at Haskell Nation University. And I hope to become a principal one day, and um, yeah, I love going to Haskell, and I love their education program. It's the best. Sanavi, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Sanavi. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I'm Sanavi Spoonhunter. Um, I am a member of the Northern Arapaho Tribe of the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. I'm also, like Avery mentioned, a descendant of the Lakota and Paiute Nations. I grew up on the Paiute Reservation in Central California. I, I attended Haskell from 2012 to 2014. I currently am... Um, a journalist, a documentary filmmaker, freelancer. I recently graduated from the University of California Berkeley's Graduate School of Journalism with an emphasis in documentary filmmaking. And I'm excited to kind of share my experience with everyone about my um, time at Haskell. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Sanavi. Thank you, Sanavi and Dania for being here today. We greatly appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. And I know all 
in the past conversations, youth and honestly adults who have really appreciated our students' expressions and their views from their universities. And they've really helped them just sort of see what it's really like to be a native student in college. And so now I would like to introduce another special guest that we have for this evening. His name is Manny King. Manny King, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Manny King, of course, and uh, I'm from actually from Lame Deer, Montana, Northern Cheyenne Res, and I'm a guidance counselor, and I have an interesting office. <laughs> I am in the dorm. I am in OK Hall, uh, one of our co-ed dorms probably holds around 120 something like that but i love it i i would probably never have my office anyplace else <laughs> but um yeah i've been there quite a while uh, i was there when dina was there and pretty involved and i've kind of tailored down a little but uh, but haskell's an awesome place it really is and you know sanavi and danelle were, are ideal they can tell you so much about haskell uh I'd rather listen to them than listen to me, but I'm here. Okay, thank you. Cool, thanks, Manny King. Yeah, it's cool. I'm glad for the work that you're doing at Haskell. I've heard so much about the university, but uh, so I'd like to tell everyone a little bit more about the background of Haskell while we're here. <clears throat> so Haskell was founded in 1884, and Haskell is now the home of approximately 800 students a semester. And it's located in Lawrence, Kansas, which is just west of Kansas City, and it's actually about it's a pretty short drive from Kansas City. I was just there. But it's one of the top 50 college towns in America by best college reviews. And on average, there are over 150 recognized sovereign nations from 38 states represented. And so you have students from Alaska all the way to Florida, to uh, Maine, basically. It, it's all the states in the United States. And so the Haskell Cultural Center houses and exhibits archival records and artifact collections from 1884 to present, which is amazing. And another amazing thing that's great for Native students is that it's tuition free. And so students pay fees only, so that fee is $715 a semester. <clears throat> and this is way better than most universities, especially for tribal colleges. <clears throat> and average student to teacher ratio is 24 to 1, which is amazing too for students who do like that closer uh, student to teacher ratio. And 80% of high school students live in the residential halls on the beautiful 350-acre 30, campus. And I can also say that this campus is extremely beautiful. Like I said, I just visited it. And honestly, I wish I wouldn't went there for two years because it's so amazing. It just feels, it feels healing, honestly. That's the vibe I got out of being there for the first time. <clears throat> and all high school also has intercollegiate athletic programs in which complete in the, or compete in the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. And the high school is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. And so that's a little bit of the information we have or what was provided for us from Haskell. And so now we'll get into our more of our discussion. So uh, for those who don't know, so for Dina, you attended Haskell. Sanavi, you attended Haskell for two years. Uh, Dania, you're a current student at Haskell. And Manny, you're a current uh, administrator at Haskell. And so for myself, I really wish I wouldn't went to Haskell for that two years. I would have. I mean, it's such a beautiful campus, but for all of our student speakers in here tonight, so why did you choose Haskell? I guess um, maybe I'll start. Uh, so I chose Haskell because it has such a, like, a rich legacy in um, Native American culture and in terms of education especially. I have uh, three elder brothers who went to Haskell, two of them graduated um, with their bachelor's in business, uh, both played basketball for Haskell Indian Nations University. And so they kind of set a really good um, pathway for me to kind of be more excited and encouraged to join this institution. And I'm really glad I did, so. Awesome, awesome. Um, I chose Haskell well, mostly because my mo mom went there and she was in the education program as well. And she just always told me about how rigorous it is and that it pushes you to be the best teacher that you can be. And so she has now been teaching for a while. And I think it's really great that she learned so much from Haskell and that it pushed her to be a great teacher. And that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So it sounds like a lot of us here I always had some sort of family connection with Haskell. I know for myself too, 
I mean, I, it's sad that I kind of broke that family line, but my mm -hmm. grandma went to Haskell. My mom and dad actually met at Haskell. So I'm what's considered a rascal for some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, so on the campus, so it's all native students and you see native students from everywhere. So what's that like? Uh, for myself, I it was very, um, it provided like a, a home experience for me, being able to relate to other students who have a similar background, being on a reservation, growing up in that lifestyle and be able to like joke and things like that and relate to one another. It was really, um, it was really comforting. And so that's something that I really enjoyed. And it, and a lot of people who apply to HASP, you would have to be a federally um, enrolled member of a federally recognized um, tribal nation. And so that was really um, important to me because I know that a lot of the students faced a lot of like similar backgrounds, like I said, in order to get to education and to be able to relate on how hard it is to kind of persevere through education and just to try to be successful for yourself, but also a lot of Native people hold like their community in very high esteem. And so that was something that was really important and that um, a lot of people on campus really related to, and that was something really special for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, for me, uh, mm -hmm. making new friends at Haskell was really mm -hmm. awesome and seeing how, like what we have in common and some differences that we may have and just sharing things like beading and sewing, like the our common interests. And it's really fun learning about how their culture is different as well, like their tribal cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, the, I mean, it's Native students from everywhere. So you see, and even though we are classified as Native under like this one term by the government, we are totally different in many ways. So I, I think that's why at Haskell, it's so like amazing just to be there because you see all those different tribes coming together and not really even blending, but sort of representing each of their own co cultures as its own. <clears throat> so and I know, Manny, uh, yeah, Danny. Oh, I was gonna ask Manny, um, he's been there for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Real long. <laughs> Cause I was a student then. Yep, yep. Um, and he was my advisor. Um, and and also our unity advisor for our club and what the students that you've seen come through has there been a, a change or are we all the same are we all like cool cat indian people or <laughs> well there's so many different tribes you know i mean it's and you know there's reservation natives there's urban there's i mean you know there's just so many uh you just learn from everybody, you know, and I'm still learning. That's the neat thing about Haskell is you always learn something. And I never quit saying I learn something every day. But just, you know, this semester, uh, we have 749 students. And we need one more to make 750. No, I was kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we got 749. And uh, we're off to a good start. Uh, we have to go online. And it's a little different for a lot of our students. I'm already talking to a young man. He doesn't want to go online. He said, this is not for me. You know, I, I'm just not clicking with it. What do you think? I said, well, just give it a little try, you know, just hang on. And if it doesn't work out, you can come back. We're not sure if we're going to be back in the spring. We don't know. Uh, it just depends on what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. So if it, uh, if we go south, we'll, we'll, you know, go back online. We don't really don't want to, but you know, just being the times as it is, it's kind of dangerous. But um, yeah, we're it's different on campus. You usually see a lot of students. I mean, we're usually going full guns, Danelle and Sanavi know that. You know, just the excitement <laughs> of seeing everybody. You know, and going up and down the halls. And uh, we don't have football anymore, sadly. But like I said, we got the sports going. We have cross country. You know basketball, volleyball, volleyball. Oh man, I talked to this young lady. She was so devastated. This is her senior year. And she said, I, um, what am I going to do? You know, I'm not going to do volleyball. It's, I'm done, you know? So yeah, it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, crushing, probably a learning experience. Somebody put it to me that way. And that was a good point is, you know, someday they're going to be able to help somebody get through something like this, you know, 
maybe um, you know they'll be in a crisis or something and they say hey I've been through that you know I know what you're going through so but yeah mm -hmm. it's just a really neat atmosphere it's worth the visit uh, Sanavi and Danelle, wouldn't you say? I mean, I, I think it is. I'll turn it over to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely is worth the visit. And I actually went out there. So my sister's going to school at Kansas City Community College. And I was like, man, we have to visit Haskell. I've never been there before. And I just hear about all the stories from Haskell, like my parents, like all my friends. So once I went out there, yeah, it was, even though there was, there was no students there, but still I felt that connection with just, I don't even know if it's just the energy that's always stuck on campus or what, but it just felt good to be there at that time. <clears throat> and so Avery, for- keep talking, Avery, you keep talking mm -hmm. about the, the environment. It's so much of that. Um, there's a, I don't know how many students still go down there, Manny, but I know we used to have sweat lodges um, down at the south side of the campus, mm -hmm. the south side, and the medicine wheel is down there. and so much energy um, to be able to go down and be a part of um, different types of prayers from all over and um, hearing Lakota songs and, and getting to learn to know and sing them and, and um, going to Mieta where uh, Dene is from and just going up in that area to, to, the, to, the, to the ceremony, the TP ceremonies. I mean, there's all kinds of things. You drive through all different states and you know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So, yeah. So it's yeah, it's it's a wonderful experience on that campus. The feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, you might be more familiar with this, but uh, and Snobby, but do you remember the process of applying to Haskell? And was it tough or was it pretty easy? Would you say? Um, when I applied, I got the application online and it was actually super easy. And once you fill out the initial application, um, Haskell's completely willing to help you with everything else. And at, as soon as you get your application in before the deadline, like everything else is okay. And um, they'll give you time to get anything together that you need. And they're willing to help you and it was really great. It was really easy. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Sanavi, did you remember any experiences? <laughs> uh, for my experience, I, I was trying to recall. Um, I I remember submitting like an actual like envelope of like a printed out application that I hand wrote with um, all of the assets that I needed to include in the application. But there, <laughs> it seems so long ago, but it wasn't that, it wasn't well. Um, but I would say that uh, when applying for students to really have somebody to kind of like vet or um, proofread your application um, essay, I, 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 I'm fairly certain that it's the still, kind of still the same format of an application and then a personal essay and things like that. So with your writing to just kind of help somebody guide you through that process and to help, like I said, proofread what you're submitting. Mm -hmm. So Manny, did you want to touch on that subject uh, of the application process sure. and maybe some resources you have on campus? Yeah, um, just like Sanavi said, you know, it's pretty, I think it's fairly easy, um, but you've got to dot everything and you know, check full time, part time, on campus, off campus. I mean, that will hold you up. You got to have an official transcript, and it's got to be. They'll work with seven semester transcript. You know, if your GPA is pretty good, they'll work with that. We do require the ACT and the SAT, and we used to have an essay. I don't know if that was there when you were there, Sanavi, but we don't have that anymore. They've kind of put that on the side. Um, immunizations is a biggie. We have to have that. But, you know, and, and sometimes students will send it in and they, because I, I work with admissions during the summer um, and they mm. think, well, I'm going to get accepted right away. So they send it in and then two days later, was I accepted? You know, I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah, it was a little break here. You know, yeah. We haven't even got your application. Uh, and persistence helps, you know, we, we're all teleworking, so I don't have any great ideas how to keep in touch with everybody, but um just keep being persistent and calling um you know just check on your application and we've had students to be honest with you we have students two weeks before that got accepted you know they finally got 
oh, something in, yeah, like a transcript or something, yeah. And that student portal, I don't know, Danelle, are you okay with that student portal? Is that working for you? Danelle? Oh, Dania, sorry. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that, how, how's uh, that student, did, how'd that student portal work for you? Oh, the student portal is great. It's actually really easy to navigate. Um, it has all your courses there and it instructs you on how to navigate through it. And it's very simple. Oh, good. Yeah, the freshmen kind of struggled with it. Uh, they have to, we added two requirements to that. They now have to go through an orientation video and Title IX training. So that was kind of different. And we really had to scramble on it because um, they would not let them enroll until they went through that. So that was another little hiccup that we had to deal with. But, you know, um, I helped a number of students with it and it got a little frustrating, but I guess once you get the hang of it, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It will, it, overall, it sounds like it's pretty, it's fairly easy. I mean, the application process, even though, I mean, every application process does have its struggles, like yeah. you said, of getting everything in on time, especially if you are on the other side of the country, or on, 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 sorry, on the other side of the country or in Alaska or something. I mean, it can be stressful sending your stuff all the way to Kansas and wondering, oh man, did my stuff get there? Yeah. Or like, yeah yeah so i definitely yeah. feel for those students <clears throat> and so speaking of being out of state so tanavi and uh, dania did you move away to go to college and if so how was that transition yeah so like um, I, I did live in nevada before oh you're good you're good you yeah. can continue <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I lived in Nevada before I started attending high school. And um, it was a pretty easy move. Well, because I grew up in Mayetta, Kansas, which is just north of high school. But the move was great from Nevada to high school. Mm -hmm. well, how about you, Sanavi? Yeah, so um, the, the transition for me was a, a little bit difficult because a lot of my family, like I said, I grew up on a reservation in California. And so traveling across states into a small little Kansas town in the heart of America was kind of, um, it was hard because I am really close with my family. and um, But luckily, I did have my brother there. My brother, um, Seppi Spoonhunter, like I said, was somebody who played basketball for the school and then graduated. And so it was nice um, to have him there. But also I would say to students who are looking into the program, um, also look into other type of networking opportunities that you can take advantage of there. There's a lot of different clubs um, on campus. I don't know what that looks like right now, but um, just reaching out to different clubs and being a part of athletics is really important to me. It's also different now, especially with COVID. And, um, but like I said, um, my brother played basketball, so it really kind of like, called me to want to be there and support him and so I was involved with the Haskell cheerleading um, group there and that was really good for me because I was able to meet people right away kind of like connect with different people on campus and um, I, so I would encourage students to really take advantage of um, you know those type of opportunities through like I said clubs or um, sports because it, it gives you a really good sense of community that kind of grounds you in this place and to be able to kind of succeed and, you know, have camaraderie. Mm. Yeah, definitely find your communities. One, like, thing I hear from a lot of students who do move away from campus or do move away from their home state, especially because, I mean, on campus, luckily there are other native students, but even there it can be isolating because you never know. Like I said earlier, every tribe is different. All native people are different. And so finding that community that you can really relate with is such a good suggestion for students who are coming from out of state. <clears throat> and often I, students, when they're on big campuses too, they tend to feel isolated. And I was wondering if there was a certain spot on campus or, or on Haskell's campus where it really feels like you're a part of that community. Uh, 
personally for me just um like you know manny was talking about how he's the he's kind of in charge of OK Hall. And OK Hall at that time when I was going was um, for at, like students who were involved with um, football. Like he said, unfortunately, they didn't have that team there any longer, but it was an athletic kind of dorm. And so just being in the dorms, I felt was like gave me a really good sense of like community and interacting with people and being um, just in, even in the hallway, you know, you have conversations with other students. I don't know what that looks like now. I, I, it's hard to say, but um, yeah, just like on campus, I would like the residential halls are a really good place to even, even people who weren't, you know, on campus students, they would come to campus and spend time with other students at the dormitories. Um, mm -hmm. But also the gazebo was a really good place to kind of meet and kind of just hang out, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, being about you, an off-campus student, it was really, um, it was really hard for me to feel connected because I lived off-campus. So normally, a place that made me feel connected was the library, just because everyone would go there and study, and I would go with my friends there, and we'd have study groups, and um, a lot of meetings would be held there, and it just did make me feel more a part of half school. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the library, the dorms, it's all like places where people tend to congregate. And, and Tanavi, you mentioned the, uh, what was it called? The, uh, yeah, the gazebo. Can you tell us more about the gazebo, Manny? Uh, I don't hang out there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding you. But I yeah, always see students over there. Now they're in front of, they kind of moved, I think, they kind of moved in front of Sequoia Hall. But yeah, <laughs> they kind of migrated over there there's a, they put these little tables out there and there's one young lady she's from san carlo she kind of seems to lead that little group but you know just like sanavi <laughs> said you know they all got their little clicks you know row cloud hall you know they got their little crew uh, the blaylock boys they were the blaylock <laughs> boys oh man they're crazy guys they're really crazy they got this little rap group there's about i thought you know there was about a couple of them there's like 10 of them and they just rap, you know, they started rapping, they said, play my boys, you know. <laughs> and everybody's got their little yeah. cliques, you know, OK Hall boys, you know. They're, they're like, say, you know, there's a lot of athletes, but, uh, and then the athletes themselves, you know, they got their own little crew, uh, cross country. Those guys are quiet, but, you know, they love to run. In fact, Haskell is going to have some kind of little uh, high school practice. They opened up the cross country court. I mean, cross country course, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, to let these high school students come run uh, on Saturday. But yeah, you kind of get your own little niche going. It's it's neat to see that, you know, I like, you know, mm -hmm. Sanavi said, it's a sense of community, you know, it, you start develop your friendships. Unfortunately, some don't last because <laughs> I've seen some really good friendships start at freshman and after about Oh man, after the end of the semester, they couldn't stand each other. But you can't change roommates. You can't change uh -huh. roommates. It's a don't stick with somebody you're not really comfortable. If you're just, yes. you know, not seeing eye to eye. And it does happen, you know, that's dorm life. Um, you get tired of each other, but yeah. <laughs> so, not to change the subject, but um, what was it like, li I mean, living in Lawrence? Kansas, period. I mean, because there's a major university there and there's a TCU. I personally yeah. think living in Lawrence is so awesome and it just feels like such a college town. And anywhere you go, like if you go to eat, um, everyone likes Hawaiian bros. So if you go to eat at Hawaiian bros, mm. you're going to see like at least a few people there. So living there is pretty awesome with all the college students. Yeah, for me, uh, Lawrence is it like because I come from a small town. So being in Lawrence, like um, Damia said, it's it's a college town for sure. Like I don't even know what the percentage of of young people living there, but <laughs> that's all I see <laughs> like young people there, which is like nice and it's fun and. Um, you know, going down um, downtown Lawrence, it's like really cool to like visit the shops and kind of like go and eat at different places. 
it it was a little bit different for for me because um, yeah, just having KU next door to um, Haskell Indian Nations University is like kind of intimidating in a way because they have KU basketball and they have like you know like all of these great things and Haskell does too. But Haskell's legacy is just phenomenal. You know, like I don't think that. that there's any real like school across this country that beats that because like, Haskell's just great, you know, it's just evolved so much from being a, what it was. And so, um, yeah, like I said, it was a little bit daunting, like with KU just like on the hill, you know, <laughs> but I think like mm -hmm. Haskell has like such a good relationship with KU. And I think that if students ever feel that type of like, and security being next to that school, you know, just reach out to faculty and staff because they have such a good relationship, like I said, with KU and they're able to like, you know, like I had a professor, um, an English professor take our class to the library on mm. KU during the my semester. Which is like really nice because, you know, she toured us around and and a lot of students, so many students transfer from Haskell to KU. And I was even accepted to Has uh, to KU after I finished my time at Haskell and Union University. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay financial financial reasons. I had to come back to Nevada. But yeah, it's just like I think that there's that, that really good relationship. So I think that students there should really try to like reach out and make that kind of time. With KU. Yeah, you mentioned the KU Haskell. Manny, is uh, the KU Haskell Exchange still available? Yes, it is. Yeah, we do. I'm thinking uh, it's kind of increased in numbers as far as students taking a free KU course. They don't have to pay the tuition. Uh, if there's a textbook or something, they do have to pay that. Um, their own transportation to get up there. But after your first semester, if you get a 2.5, which is like a C plus average, you can apply for a free KU course. So, and it's pretty open. Uh, I've heard, you know, students take band, some kind of, some other unique language course, you know, I mean, there's so much you can take up there. And, you know, we don't have a lot of faculty. So ours in that sense is limited because our focus is a lot of native, native issues, mm -hmm. native history, you know, but KU is pretty wide open, and uh, they rent about 23000 and they pretty much run Lawrence when they roll into town, you know. They, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lawrence was, I mean, I've been to multiple college towns. I've been to uh, South Bend, where Notre Dame is, Eugene, Oregon, um, and Lawrence is definitely towards the top of those towns. This, you can just feel the vibe as soon as you go in there. It's like a complete college town. I think that's the, what's so cool about Haskell is that you also have the experience of Haskell while being in that college town where KU is at. <clears throat> and so, Sanavi, I know you also, you said you've been to UNR and also UC Berkeley. So uh, many students do face challenges while in school. And what was your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it? Um, I feel like for me, just to kind of like set like a base for this conversation is just that Haskell with the faculty and staff there just really I just so much appreciate them because they really give, gave me a base in education and wanting to pursue a higher education and um, I haven't mentioned this before but I I'm not a graduate of Haskell Indian Nation University I think I'm like three or six credits shy of getting my associates but I ended up transferring, but like I said, they gave like a very good, very strong base in education for, for myself. And um, so going to uh, UNR, it was it was a hard transition, you know, because at Haskell you're surrounded by like such a strong community of native people. And then like coming to UNR, it's like, oh, and the, being in the program I was in, which is journalism, that's what I wanted to pursue. Um, it was like, oh, I'm the only little Indian, you know? So it's like, I like a lot of students I know for a fact feel tokenized when they're in a room that they can't relate to other students. And so that was mm -hmm. a really hard transition I did have. And so that was really difficult. And then going to just these big institutions, you know, like majority, like white institutions, you know, even in Berkeley, mm -hmm. it was a really hard, tough transition where you feel the sense, I think, to answer your question, um, Avery, like 
the biggest struggle that I had to overcome was this feeling of imposter syndrome. Like feeling like I didn't belong or I wasn't like worthy or like educated enough to be in these spaces when in fact like I work just as hard as everyone else, you know? And, mm -hmm. and a lot of native people we have like so many barriers to education and just for people to just overcome those barriers, I think is like so important and so special. And I think that's something that um, despite how you feel in spaces where you're the only native person and whenever a native person, like whenever a native topics brought up, like everybody kind of looks at you, you know, and you're just like, don't feel like you need to be a spokesperson. I think to echo everybody's kind of um, outlook in this conversation so far is that there's so many different tribes with so many different culture, language, like identity in their own way. And so I, I just would encourage students to not feel, you know, like you need to be this representative of over 573, like four federally recognized tribes. And there's even more than that. So it's like, how are you going to, you know, don't, don't be so hard on yourselves. And I think that that's something that I really had to kind of learn myself is to not be so hard on, on myself in these spaces when I do have this kind of this projected idea of like who I am and what I am, but just, um, yeah, just feel, just try your best to feel comfortable and have people like family, friends to kind of encourage you in that and kind of like, you know, you have to have a strong support system. I mean, mm -hmm. from my own lived experience, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just like you, I've heard similar stories from students who do feel this imposter syndrome where they feel like they're, the people around them are, especially, yeah, like you said, like at big institutions that are known to be like these smart, mm -hmm. Uh, I need high grade institutions, but yeah, honestly, like you said, we've people people have just like us have put in the work. We've done the same work, but like, yeah, we can do it. And for everyone out there watching today, you can do it. And don't let anyone else tell you that you can't. And so, Dania, I know you've also been to different schools too. And so, what was your biggest challenge either at WNC or Haskell, and how did you overcome it? Well, um, as she mentioned before, at WNC, it was really hard because you do face discrimination. Um, but for me, I just had to ignore it and keep, you know, doing my best and getting the good grades that I was. And then um, one of the biggest challenges I faced, though, was getting used to the workload because it was a lot of work. Getting my associates just feels like it was more work than the work that I'm doing for my major right now and I think it's just because at first when you get the large workload it's difficult but then once you get your associates and start taking those classes towards your major you start to enjoy it more because that's what you want to do with your life and that's building your career so um, I just overcame it just because um, I started like loving the work and it was really great Mm -hmm. That's really interesting how Sanavi went to Haskell for her first couple of years and then switched and you went to WNC and then went to Haskell. So I, I never thought about like the differences in um, how the perspectives are so much different. I went to Haskell first and then I went to the University of Kansas. And I felt exactly like Sanavi. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in a room full of people who know so much more than me. I had to like read more. I had to write more. I had to go to the, I had to do more because I didn't feel like I was ready for like being in a mainstream institution. And it, but being at Haskell like made you proud of who you were. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. what was kind of cool mm -hmm. about it. Um, and then when you got to KU, there was like a student organization who I'm still friends. I'm friends with so many people um, who went to Haskell, who were at KU um, with me. And they're like my, you know, I talk to them all the time. Um, many of those people come to Nevada now and work for us. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting how we feel like we're not enough when we get into these institutions, um, when we really are. So I, that's my message to students is what Sanabi said, you said it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like the, for any youth out there watching tonight, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do anything because I know you can. We've been there, myself, Dania, I've been there, Sanavi, Manny even probably, for Dina. We've all been in the same boat where we've thought maybe we can't do something, but honestly, we can do anything. We've been through a lot already. Our ancestors, ancestors have been through a lot. And I mean, what's going to stop us today? So we can do anything. <clears throat> And now we'll get into my favorite native question. So how is the food in Kansas? And I know I always hear about pizza shuttle um, <laughs> and a bunch of other places. So how is the food in Lawrence? Um, I think the food is absolutely great. Um, during summer, when I went back to Nevada to spend time with my family, the whole time I was in Nevada, I was craving Hawaiian bros because that's literally the best <laughs> place ever. And scooters too. So I just love mm -hmm. it there. And pizza shuttle's really great. And they deliver mm -hmm. quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard. Yeah. We, we would order it at two o'clock in the morning. Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah. that's the cutoff time. <laughs> How about you, Sanabi? I think I, still, I think I still know the phone number, 8421212, I think. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so everyone, for everyone out there, 842. <laughs> 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 and Sanabi, did you remember anything about the food or fun things to do in Lawrence? Yeah, so hands down, anybody who goes to Lawrence, anyone, Dempsey's is hands down the best burgers and fries that you can find like anywhere like i still crave it to this day but i have to kind of give a little um shout out there to shuttle because <laughs> everybody loves <laughs> pizza uh, my brother was just there i think like last year and he took a snapchat and it was like a little shuttle box <laughs> but yeah. I, like to be to be honest, I'm um, Curtis Hall. Their food, I, their weekend food. Like I would always go there for breakfast. Like that was my favorite. Like um, on Saturdays, I would go there for like um, their biscuits and gravy and um, eggs. Like that was probably like my weekly like thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a big breakfast person too. I used to actually used to eat pizza, but. I had to go with my roots and get rid of dairy. So, <laughs> so it's been a while since I've had since I've had pizza. But honestly, I just crave it. And one day, I think I may just try pizza shuttle next time I'm out there. <laughs> um, so I know we're all sharing laughs right now. But I mean, I mean, college is fun. There's a lot of parts about it that man, many of us don't even talk about. But what was the funniest memory for everyone that you've had in college? And you can choose any memory. I mean, as long as it's a halfway PG memory. <laughs> I like for myself, I mean, I don't have like one memory that really stands out, but like going to the basketball games or like going to the powwow and Manny being there, like emceeing, it was so like, I would have a lot of fun just being uh -huh. <laughs> Pulling up the students and kind of like, you know, all of these, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I would also have to say, I can't really think of one specific memory, but just getting to know everyone there is really amazing. And I'm um, completely a powwow person. I love powwows and I love Haskell powwow so much. It's like so amazing. And um, actually, I want to run for Miss Haskell, but um, unfortunately this year they didn't do that. So um, my, mem my favorite memory is actually in the future because I'm going to love, absolutely love running for that. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, we wish you the best Good of luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll vote for you. I look forward we can. to it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll tell everyone to vote for you. Hopefully, people in the comments will vote for you. Oh, good one. <laughs> yeah, but so um, I guess for everyone sort of in here right now, Dania, Sanavi, and Manny, what advice would you give to future Indigenous college students who are thinking of Haskell or even just going on to a, a post secondary institution? Uh, we can start with Dania. <clears throat> um, I would say just don't stress too much about it. 
but um, be more excited than stressed because I was always so stressed and I always pushed myself so hard. I mean, which is a good thing, but you also have to be excited and learn to live in the moment. And I mean, it's college, so be excited for it. And don't think too much about the workload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You want me to go next? Oh, uh, yeah, you're good. You're good. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, in terms of high school specifically, like you mentioned, Avery, it's just such a, like a strong place of healing. Like even just the museum on campus, I remember going there and it was just like, you don't hear about this history in our textbooks. I mean, I didn't hear about this history when I was going to school in California, you know? And so, I mean, things are changing now and it's different, but I think during my time is just like being so rooted in my culture and my history. Like, like I said, it just set a strong base for moving forward and just embracing who I am as a native person. Um, but in terms of like generally going to college, I would, I would encourage students to just always challenge yourself, you know, because there's so many times where I've doubted myself or I was intimidated by a certain program or, or something that I wanted to do but I just went for it and it's just changed my life completely. It, just like my perspective on life and just where I wanna go and who I wanna be. And so I would just like really encourage students, no matter what it be, even if it's trade school, like going mm -hmm. off to a city and just getting that experience and challenging yourself to get that certificate or diploma, I think it's just so important and it's just so worth the struggle at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. How about you, Manny? What's your best piece of advice you would give oh, the indigenous wow. culture? I think giving it, just give it a try. It may not be your cup of tea or whatever, but just try it. And Haskell's a really good place to come to. You know, you can like, you know, said previously, you can really network. Uh, you know, and not all of our students are going to make it. You know, there is a high percentage that will not, you know, continue, but you can always come back. That's what I always tell students is maybe this is not the right time. I used to be the registrar and I used to see all the grades, you know, all the guys that said, oh man, I got a perfect uh, four point GPA. And I said, no, you don't, you know, <laughs> but you can't really say that, you know, but, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of just trying it, networking, staying involved. You know, we have so particularly there at that college, you know, we have like cultural activities, I think are kind of a big draw for a lot of our students, you know, like hand games, round dance, you know, we have the powwows, we even have a cultural feed and everybody, you know, like, the, um, you know, the Alaskans get to bring down their salmon and mm. uh, there's one, <laughs> I've not tasted it, but there's one young lady that has her uh, seal blubber in, in the freezer at, at OK Hall, you know. But, you know, there's just different things you can try, you know. Uh, we even have a Native American church. I know, that, um, you know, that's kind of neat. You know, we have, there's just a little bit of everything for everybody there. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would encourage, you know, our young people to give it a whirl, you know, try it. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people that pray for you and wish the best for you and I always tell that to students that you're never going to see that but somebody's praying for you somebody really wants you to succeed and we're there for them you know not just myself there's a lot of people always say that Haskell's not made up of one person it just includes the dorm people you know they're your sometimes they're your lean on people uh, could be somebody in Sequoia could be the janitor you know but we're all there's so many native people that work there and I think we just want to see you all succeed you know and Man, when graduation is awesome. You should see graduation. I mean, it's really an exciting time when those students walk across, you know, and it almost makes me tear up right now, you know, because they didn't get to do that this year. It was really sad. And mm -hmm. there were students that were really took it hard, you know, but I said, we're not going to forget about you. You know, that's a big deal to walk across that stage, you know, Haskell Indian Nation University fighting Indians, you know. We're going to make it happen for you one way or another. We'll, we'll make it happen for you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for that advice. All those pieces, like I mean, especially for people watching today, like I said earlier, this is advice for youth, for parents to give to their children who are maybe going to college or thinking about going to college. 
<clears throat> all this advice is super helpful. And it's, I wish honestly at times that I had this advice that I'm hearing right now. And I think that's why it's so good to hear from everybody, especially uh, students who are currently in college, recent graduates, and also a worker from the university. So thank you. <clears throat> so now we'll move on to our Facebook questions. And so our first question is from Lindsay Dunn. And her question, I guess it could be for um, Dania, uh, for Dina, Sanavi. <laughs> but she, her question was, how was it to experience a predominantly white institution after having attended high school? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just <laughs> kind of, um, yeah, so it was, it was like I like I'd mentioned before, like the imposter syndrome is real, you know, um, just like not feeling um, maybe I don't even. Yeah, just like not. I mean, you're welcome to, you, you know, a lot of uh, schools promote diversity and they want a diversity in their institutions and in the student body. Um, but what I can say for Haskell, one of the major differences is just the leadership and staff are an almost like a 100% reflection of who you are as a native person. And so when you go into these institutions like predominantly white, like Lindsay had mentioned in her question, it's like, you don't see that and you don't see that reflection of, you know, being a native person going in and asking for help or asking what is a treaty you know, like asking mm. for the advice that they're paid to like help students with. And so that's something that's like, I hope changes in these institutions is just that they not only promote diversity in the student body, but also in the staff and faculty, because that's even more important for students to succeed in those spaces. Mm. Haskell, like a majority of the faculty are indigenous, so, you know, you're getting a perspective and everything is intertwined, like, you know, Western civilization, they're also gonna focus on, you know, the native perspective. Um, I took Western Civ at KU and did not get that. Um, I actually worked at Haskell for a short time for like five years probably as an academic advisor as well. So um, I could kind of, from both perspectives as a student, it was, really um, in a way just to go into a classroom where it's there's not a native perspective um, but also you're you're able to learn about different cultures and different um, things so it kind of is eye-opening in being able to see um, a world that's not yours um, but then again Haskell you're learning about all of these different tribes and some of the um, assimilation processes and some of the atrocities that were our native people faced that we didn't learn in high school. <laughs> so you're going from, you know, predominantly uh, white people uh, taught uh, curriculum in your high school going into Haskell and you're like, wow, I didn't know all this. I didn't even know that there was actually Cherokees and, and they have a language. Oh my gosh, I called home right away. And so you, you're like so excited because you're learning about all these different people and about their tribal cultures and traditions, their dressing, their everything. And then you go into, you know, the KUs of the world or the, the uh, UNRs or whatever. And it's, it's a lot different. But I think by then, you know, you're grounded. You feel you have a foundation underneath you where you you know that you can do anything. I mean, you mm -hmm. achieved. I mean, I I graduated uh, from Haskell and went straight to KU, and it was kind of hard. <laughs> I was I fumbled my way through there. So one of my suggestions, I know one of our questions is, what would you suggest? My suggestion is find that guidance counselor, find that academic counselor, find whoever you can ask questions, um, talk to your instructors about, you know, what you need to do, because I probably would have been a lot more successful at the University of Kansas in the very beginning if I would have done those things. Um, mm -hmm. I actually graduated my master's from the University of Kansas too, so I spent a lot of my years in, in Lawrence. And, mm -hmm. um, and I also saw a lot of students that um, went to different institutions and 
you know, so yeah, I get that's a really strong question, Lindsay. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. And so we'll do one last quick question from Sandra Mitrovich. And this one's for so for Dania and Sanavi. So if you could add one program to student services that would assist native students, what would that be? Oh, I think, uh, Sandra, during um, my time at UNR, I mean, I have to give it to UNR. They have like a Native American faculty member in the journalism school. Unfortunately, he wasn't there during my time, but he's there now. So they're making moves. And also um, the Native American Student Organization was a really, really um, powerful kind of service for students to go. And especially during when Sandra was there, I just want to tell like tell her that it was it was really helpful and beneficial for me and that's where i met avery and things like that but i would just encourage students to really like seek out those kind of services themselves and really try to um make that effort for your career and your education because yeah mm -hmm. yeah thank you how about you dania i have to agree with uh tsunami yeah yeah i mean yeah that one person could change honestly, anyone's college career. I mean, Sandra helped me with my career actually at the University of Nevada. I was on the verge of even just honestly leaving school at one point. And I remember as soon as I found Sandra Moore, or I started going with Sandra Moore, I found the NASO, uh, my college career just totally turned over. <clears throat> but so I would like to thank everyone. Thank you, Dania, Sanavi, Manny. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to be with us. I know we're in busy times right now. So, um, and I just love hearing everyone's opinions and different stories and all your suggestions for native youth out there. And I know all these native youth who are listening and parents and uh, other maybe education faculty out there will really take this information uh, well. So thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having us. so much. You're welcome. Okay, have a good day, everybody. So well, thank you everybody for tuning in to our episode featuring Haskell. It was another great episode once again. And thank you to everyone who keeps commenting. Always uh, remember to comment at the end of our videos, post your questions, because we're always gonna have a session at the end for everyone to answer. <clears throat> so thank you everyone for joining in. Um, thank you to all our native youth for joining in. I hope you've taken this information and I hope it really helps you in the future, especially when you're thinking about going to school. <clears throat> yeah, and find that one mentor, like um, Avery said, it's uh, Manny was mine. He is still my mentor to this day, and um, we're working together continuously. So you never know where things can lead uh, when you find that mentor or people along the way. So, Pascal. <laughs> Okay, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. So next week on Tuesday, we are featuring a Native teacher, or it's a Native student who is actually pursuing and wants to be a teacher. So Tuesday at 6 p.m., feel free to tune in as we feature Tyler Sumter. And thank you, everybody, and see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.